pre-algebra. We are on 7.8 now. Make sure you have your book and your interactive notebook. You can go ahead and title your page 7.8% change. Make sure you're updating your table of contents as we go with your page number. All right, again, as always, please pause the video. I'm going to go a little bit faster than you might be able to write since I have it already up there. So pause this, write this down, and then follow along. All right. So here we've got our percent change. A percent change, what does that even mean? Well, if we have, think about even the virus right now, we've got a percent change from the amount of cases one day to the next. There's a change in the number, but if you had a small city and you had five new cases one day, that's different than having a huge city with five new cases. It would be a percentage of the amount of people, so it's growing at a faster pace in a small city than a big city if it were indeed the same number. So the percent change helps to get rid of that and kind of be an even playing field. Percent change could be uh, used in science too. You might say a percent of change in the bacteria growth. You might have a percent change from um, some number to another. It could increase, it could decrease, it could be um, a percentage that you earn in money, it could be um, a point in increase, it could be um, pounds for some uh, company when they're producing materials, whatever it might be, there's going to be amount that something changes. And anytime there's a change in a number amount, you can find a percent from that. So if we're going to calculate it, we need to have our percent change. It's going to equal how much it changed. We'll divide it by the original and then turn it into a percent, essentially multiply it by 100 at the percent sign. So this is our formula here, and these are the steps we'll take to complete the formula. So if you're doing the formula, these are the steps you'll take. Okay, Find the amount of change. That's the first step here. We're going to subtract in order to do that. Then we'll divide it by the original and then we'll multiply by 100. It's as though there are these parentheses around here um, so that we have to subtract before we divide even though that's not what the order of operation says. So we gotta do parentheses so that that happens first. All right, if you're just plugging it into the formula. All right, let's start with example two. I want you just to skip example one if you're following along on page 303. Um, we've done problems like that. We might get to them, but again, for sake of kind of picking what's most valuable, that's a little bit different and you're going to solve it completely differently than the other examples. So we're going to start with example two. We want to know what is the percent change from 75 to 100? Okay, so we're going from 75 to 100. Um, first thing I want you to think about, is this an increase or is this a decrease? Does it get bigger or smaller? Well, it's definitely an increase, so go ahead and write that so you can already decide. And we'll just plug in like a percent amount, okay? All right, so coming to our formula, um, our percent change will equal um, the amount of change and then we can divide it by the original amount and then turn it into a percent. So our first step is just to find the amount of change. So it goes from 75 to 100. You're going to take whatever number is bigger. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about trying to turn it into a negative number. Literally take whichever number is bigger and subtract the smaller amount. The word increase or decrease is what's going to tell you if it goes up or down, positive or negative. Okay? So just take your larger number, subtract your smaller number. In this case, we get 25. So my amount of change is 25, and I will divide it by the original Okay, so do I need to divide this by 75 or 100? I need to divide this by 75. That's where I started because it got bigger. And it's a smaller number in this case. Okay, now when you divide this out, you'll find that this is the same as one-third. So that's going to be 0 0.3 repeating. See why these decimal, the fraction, percent memorization is really helpful. You don't even need to pull your calculator out. So you should have that. And that was step two already. Now step three is to turn it into a percent. Well, point three, instead of filling in with um, zeros, I'm going to fill in with threes because it's going to keep going on forever and always. So I'm multiplying by 100. Move my decimal two places to the right. I know I'm going quickly through that. That should be review. So we'll have 33.3. .3. Make sure you keep the repeating sign. Percent or... 
33 and a third percent. Now, most of you should also have that part memorized without having to multiply by 100. Okay, so what's the answer? Well, it was 33 and a third percent increase. Now, does that mean that if I went from 100 to 75, it's also a 33.3 percent decrease? No, it's not. It's going to go down. We would actually get a 25% decrease if we were to calculate all of that out. There's um, a step to show that in your book if you're wanting to look at that. Um, so you need to calculate it either way. Uh, it's not going to be the same amount because your original amount changes. That's why it would not be exactly the same. All right, example three. Find the percent change to the nearest whole percent from 19 to 16. Okay, so we're going from 19 to 16. Here's my original, and this is where I'm landing. Is this an increase or a decrease? Before you even start your steps, I would start there. Yeah, this is a decrease. It's going to go down. We'll put some percentage in there. Okay, so step one, find the amount of change. Well, it doesn't really matter which one you start with. You just start with ever number is bigger remember and then subtract we talked about that so we're going to get three is my amount of change remember our formula we need to take our percent change i guess let's see let's do it this way our percent of change is going to equal now we can plug that number in our amount of change and divide it by my original which one's my original here it's not about whether it's bigger or smaller, it's which one comes first. So in this case, I'm going to need to divide by 19. So I would plug that into your calculator. You could take 3 and divide it by 19, um, and you should get 0.16. Now, is that my percent? No. Sorry, that was step 2. Now step 3 is to take my 16 hundredths, multiply by 100, and you get a 16% decrease. All right, we're going to add another example. This one is not in your book, so bear with me. Um, you can write this as example three, or I'm sorry, four if you want, um, but we will do the example four from the book also. So um, I'm just leaving this as example. It's up to you how you want to do that in your interactive notebook. Remember, make it your own. Okay, let's say that we were starting, um, if I were to give you a problem that might say increase 25 by 10%. Well, what's happening here is that I'm looking for something different. I'm not looking for my percent change right now, just like all the other problems we've done. I want to know how much do I end up with later. So I know it's an increase, which means my number should be bigger than 25. Now we could walk through how to work backwards in this formula and I contemplated doing that but I think it's going to be more confusing than just explaining it in a simple way. So these problems are going to be a little bit different. If we have an increase I know I'm going to add. If I have a decrease, let's say I had 25 decreased by 10 percent, I'm going to subtract. Okay so that makes sense, right? I'm going to have something smaller than 25 or I'd have something bigger than 25. Well, the percentage is based off the original amount. So what is 10% of 25? I know that's kind of pulling back what we looked at before. 10% of 25. Now, is 25 my whole or my part? In this case, it would be my whole. I wanted to have 25% of this. You could put an X here and multiply through. Um, or what we'll find every single time we do this is that they will be set up the same, which means we can simply just take point my um, my percentage as a decimal and, mul and multiply by the whole number. So we'll take 10 as a decimal, 10% as a decimal, and multiply it by 25. All right? And then, which is essentially just taking this, in case you want to know, dividing it out in here and then multiplying it. So it's the same thing as my setup over here. You can do it either way. All right, so then I'm just going to get um, 2.5. And I want to add that back on because it's an increase. So I need to take my original and add on the 2.5 that I now created. Um, 
and I will get 27.5. So there's your answer here. The increase, if you increase 25 by 10%, you get 27.5. So let's do the same thing. We want to find 25 times 0.10. You can do it either way. We did 0.10 earlier times 25. It's a commutative property of multiplication. It doesn't matter which way you multiply. Um, and we'll get 2.5, but instead of adding it this time, we're going to subtract it because we want our answer to be less than 25. So we'd have to just subtract that, and you would get 22.5. Okay, so your answer to a number, I'm sorry, if you decrease 25 by 10%, you get 22.5. If you increase it by 10%, you get 27.5. So let's go ahead and do skills check one on page 304. I want you to try numbers one through six. Please pause the video, try them on your own, and we'll check back in to go over answers. All right, the first two are like the last example we did. If you increase 20 by 30%, you would take 20, times 0.3 and then you would add it back on to that 20 you would get 6 here and you'd add it back on so you would have a total of 26 is 26 bigger than 20 yes so it was an increase all right number two if you decreased 40 by 15 percent you would multiply those two uh, remember use your percent as a decimal okay and you would get six again but we're going to subtract it from 40 so you should get 34 Number three, the original amount is 10 and the new amount is 13. So remember, we have to subtract here a little bit. What is the change? Take our bigger number, subtract the smaller number. Well, the difference between 13 and 10 is just three. And we would take three and divide it by our original amount. So we should have, and then, sorry, and then turn it into a, a percent. I won't go over each one exactly how to do it. Uh, you should have a 30% increase now remember, right increase and decrease first, just say, hey, is this going up? Is it going down? So for number four, when I look at it, the new amount six, it's coming way down. I already know it's a decrease. When you subtract the two and then divide it by 25, don't divide by six, divide by the original amount, you should get 76% decrease. For number five, you should subtract 42 from 40. You only get two is the difference. Divide that by 40, which is your original amount, and you should have 5%. And you noticed that it went up, so you wrote increase. Hopefully you started with that. And number six, you subtracted the two. You got four, divided it by the original amount, divide four by 50, and multiply by 100, add your percent sign, 8% decrease. Okay, how'd you do? Good. All right, last example. Hang in there. We're not going to do both word problems. You only have a couple on your homework for tomorrow. Um, we are going to do example four from the book on page 304 as our word problem example. I know you already have the answer there, so hang in there with me. Make sure you're putting this in your interactive notebook, and let's give this a try. Last year, Mrs. Rutherford's homeroom sold 56 cartons of candy bars. Good job, guys. This year, her homeroom sold 80 cartons. What was the percent change? Give the answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. That means we're going to get some sort of a decimal that has more than, I don't know, one number after the decimal, and we're just going to um, simplify or estimate there. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is say, is it an increase? Is it a decrease? Well, it's definitely an increase. They did a much better job. I'll the first one sounded like a lot of candy bars to me in the first place. So our step number one would be to find the amount of change. Again, it doesn't matter which is your original and which is not for this part. I guess we start at 56 cartons and we went all the way up to 80. So we know it's some percent increase. Okay, so let's take our larger number and subtract our smaller number. Should get 24 is the amount of change. Then we need to take our amount of change and divide it by our original amount. Now, which one's original? This is probably the hardest part, is just making sure you divide by the right number. They started at 56, so you're going to divide by 56. Don't divide by 80. 
Okay, you should be able to simplify this one a little bit, but you'll still end up with a decimal. We'll have to divide it out. You should get 0 0.429. Am I done? Not quite. Still have to turn it into a percent. All right, so when we turn it into a percent, we multiply by 100. We put the percent sign, and it told us to round to the nearest tenth of a percent, so we're going to need to check and make sure we don't need to do anything like that. Do I have more than one number after the decimal? No, I'm actually already there. I only have one number after the decimal. If I had another number here, I would have to check and see if I need to raise the score, keep it the same, but I don't. So I'm actually going to just leave it like this. I already have my answer. So the answer to this question is it was a 42.9% increase. I guess I could put it up here too. Sorry, it looks so sloppy. All right, they did a much better job. It was you know, almost twice as much. Great job. Okay, well, go ahead and um, feel free to be done for the day. The next day you'll need to, I guess Friday, you'll need to try out the problems um, that are assigned. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out.